I know you find it difficult, dear, but would you like to tell us your story? But I've already explained it to the Wednesday night people on many occasions. In fact, every time a new member joined, you made me tell my story. Yes, but you're a Friday night person now, dear. And I do think it helps to create a bond between us if we're willing to open our hearts to our friends. And remember what I told you. A problem is only a solution in disguise. Yeah? Mm. Super. <laughs> it's a corker. <laughs> well, I was married for 12 years to my husband, <laughs> George. We had two children, George Jr. and my little girl, Sylvia. And we all lived in Sudbury. <laughs> we belonged to a Latin American formation dance team. We were also members of a scuba diving club. We had a very full and rewarding life. Sounds bliss. Get onto the juicy. <laughs> Come to the crux of the matter. The moment you realised you were living a lie. Yes. It was one Thursday evening. I'd been out late night shopping. Sudbury's Sainsbury stayed open late on Thursdays. <laughs> when I returned, George was already home. His Montego was parked in the drive. I went into the house, but I couldn't find him at first. So I went upstairs to our bedroom. The curtains had been drawn, so it was rather dark. As my eyes became accustomed, I noticed there was a woman sitting at my dressing table putting on makeup. How odd. Where was George? Sitting at my dressing table putting on makeup. You mean they were both sitting at your dressing table? Most probably felt a bit chilly, Ralph. <laughs> Ralphie, Ralphie, my man, don't you understand what a chick's saying? Georgie boy was a sissy. <laughs> Dear God. Um, what? I, I mean, how? What did you say to him, Sylvia? I looked him straight in the eyes and I said, George, what are you doing in my clothes? <laughs> he started crying. S sissy. <laughs> For years and years, he'd felt like a woman trapped in a man's body. <laughs> <laughs> he admitted he'd been secretly dressing up in my clothes for a long time. And you never suspected anything? No. Well, I did once find some beer stains on a blouse I'd never worn. I had the most awful row in Dorothy Perkins about it. <laughs> anyway... After that, George came completely out of the closet. He gave away all his men's clothes and bought himself a brand new wardrobe. Mix and match, mostly. A couple of Zandra Rhodes. <laughs> Tell him what he used to do with the anti-wrinkle cream. <laughs> I still find it hard to talk about. Well, of course you do, dear. I do understand. We're all with you. Uh, how about George Jr. and little Sylvia, Sylvia? Did it affect them in any way? Well, naturally, they were shocked at first. They both had to suffer derision and mockery at school. You should have spoken with their teachers. I did. And they stopped doing it after that. <laughs> To begin with, the children refused to see George. But gradually, over the years, they've grown to accept him as he is. 
What about you, Sylvia? How did you fit into the new scheme of things? Well, I didn't. I was the one person he didn't need anymore. We tried for a while to just carry on as normal. Normal? But in the end, it became impossible. Oi, decided to catch at the scuba diving club, cope with having a transvestuary as a member. <laughs> we had to resign. <laughs> George's own fault, really. Instead of telling them the truth and allowing them time to get used to the idea, he just turned up one evening wearing my one-piece Halton X swimsuit. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. Too soon, you see. He was a fat chap as well, wasn't he? I never understood how he managed to squeeze into it. It had adjustable size. Oh. What about the ballroom? <laughs> The Latin American formations. <laughs> were they more understanding? Yes. Yes, they were, actually. George and I had a few problems to begin with. Yeah, like who should lead. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually the situation became too much for me and George went to share a flat with a friend. I found living without him very difficult. I still find it very difficult. You see, I still... I still love him. <laughs> <laughs> I started to blame myself. I thought maybe I wasn't a real woman. Well, that made two of you. <laughs> When someone doesn't need you, you can't hold on to them. There's nothing to hold on to. 